Everyone remembers Didier Drogba and Jose Mourinho's Chelsea. A special, formidable, and effective striker, and a coach that was just as special, formidable, and effective. But no one knows the story behind their first meeting. Happily, you're about to find out all about it. It's October 22nd, 2003. Jose Mourinho's FC Porto have traveled to Olympique de Marseille's Velodrome Stadium for the group stages of the Champions League. The Portuguese club wins 3-2 at Marseille's ground, but one OM player catches Jose Mourinho's eye. He's fast, he's technical, he's a good finisher, and above all, he's passionate. He goes by the name of Didier Drogba. Didier Drogba came into my life in the fifth minute of a Champions League game in Marseille's mythical Velodrome. I'd hardly sat down when that giant with the 11 on his shirt scored. He celebrated that goal like it was his last. The crowd went mad. The noise was deafening. It was love at first sight. And it was also the start of a long love story. Because Mourinho didn't plan on missing his chance with Drogba. At halftime, I found him in the tunnel and told him, I don't have the money to buy you, but do you have any cousins that can play like you in the Ivory Coast? He laughed, hugged me, and said, one day you'll be in a club which can buy me. The day finally came. Because as the season went on, Jose Mourinho led Porto to the 2004 Champions League final that they won, as well as the Portuguese League. At the same time, Didier Drogba was breaking all the records in Marseille and becoming a local hero. Drogba scored 32 goals and made 7 assists in 55 matches. Their joint destinies brought them together, and as Drogba had predicted, Mourinho ended up having the means to buy the Ivory in. Don't Please don't call me arrogant because what I, I'm saying is true. I'm European champion, so I'm not one of, of the bottle. I'm a, I think I'm a special one. In the summer of 2004, Mourinho gave in to the temptation of the Premier League, in particular as Roman Abramovich had just bought Chelsea and wanted to make it a first-rate club. To do this, he bought Jose Mourinho and made him the highest-paid coach in the world. And now, all was well. The special one had enough money to buy anyone. Six months later, I signed for Chelsea. I had found a super powerful club which everyone wanted to negotiate with. Everyone wanted to be linked to, and everyone wanted to play for. I had a number of options, but I arrived and said, I want Didier Drogba. Jose Mourinho was determined. To kick off his reign at Chelsea, he wanted Drogba the player that had caught his eye six months earlier in Marseille. Legend has it, Abramovich was even willing to buy him Ronaldinho. But Mourinho wanted Drogba as a priority. Abramovich gave in, and it might be one of the best footballing decisions the billionaire ever made in his life. A few days passed, and I met with Didier in a private airport in London. Again, he hugged me. But this time, in an unforgettable way an embrace that showed this man's gratitude and the affection he feels towards people who mean a lot to him. Indescribable. Then he told me, thank you. I will fight for you. You won't regret it. I will stay loyal to you forever. And that's just what he's done. Together, Mourinho and Drogba once again made Chelsea contenders in the Premier League. Mourinho allowed Chelsea to win again. Drogba created a generation of Blues fans, a winning combo. Together, Mourinho and Drogba won three Premier Leagues, one FA Cup, three League Cups, and a Community Shield. Without the Portuguese coach, Didier Drogba lifted the ultimate title for Chelsea, the Champions League, in 2012, after an emotional game against Bayern Munich. Jose Mourinho left to win elsewhere, at Inter, then Real Madrid, Finally returning to Chelsea in 2013, and in his second season, he asked Drogba to come back, which the Ivory and International did, winning another Premier League title in 2015. But while the Mourinho-Drogba relationship is synonymous with titles, success, and a close bond, 
it could have been completely different. This time, we're in the summer of 2005. This list of titles might have made you nostalgic or made you forget that, just like a magician has to practice their tricks to perfection before performing in front of a crowd, Mourinho had to bring the best out of Drogba before they could parade around London on a bus. There was a moment after my first season at Chelsea where I wanted to go back to my comfort zone, meaning return to Marseille to be the only striker, with the team at my service. And that's when, according to the Ivorian, Mourinho's words really got through to him. They changed the course of Didier Drogba's career. You know, if you want to be the only king, go back to the team you were playing for and score for them. Go back. Here, there are 22 kings. So either you accept it and you work together or you leave. You'll go back to where you came from and you'll be the only king with everyone beneath you. Drogba stayed, improved, and became indispensable. But Mourinho had only just brushed the surface and brought out what was already inside of him. Unmatched loyalty, natural leadership. His loyalty came out in his leadership and in the way he always faced up to the difficult moments. Moments when nothing else matters than to be there for your leader and your colleagues. This was a person I knew I could count on whenever and wherever I needed. When the team was under pressure, he would help defend. When he felt pain, he would stretch himself to the limit. And then, of course, came what he did best, scoring goals. After this reassessment, Drogba had no more doubts. He gave his all under Mourinho's command and even under the Portuguese coach's successors. It's thanks to this reassessment that this amazing history that we told you about previously was made possible. Now that one of them is coaching elsewhere and the other is retired from the pitch, all that's left are the memories. Drogba is a Chelsea legend. You just have to look at the banners that were recently displayed at Stamford Bridge. A large part of Drogba's story was written with Mourinho. And it's these shared stories that the special one will remember about the Ivorian. Those goals brought him titles and awards, but what stays with me are the countless stories we have together. Stories Drogba had with other coaches, just like Mourinho. But what they have in common is unique and special like Jose. So unique that they have definitely become a part of football history. <laughs>